Well, hello, and uh, welcome to an afternoon, probably somewhere around the turn of spring. I'm walking along the Paston Way, which is a, a, a long range footpath through Norfolk. Uh, this section, I imagine, used to be a railway. It's an embankment on either side. I don't know enough about it, so I'm, I'm guessing it was a railway. Further down here, I get to a place called Pigney's Wood, and it's getting on in the afternoon. It is quarter past four. And I'm out for a particular type of shot. But yeah, I'm here to get some ICM photos. Now, if you're not familiar with ICM, it stands for Intentional Camera Movement. It's art, if you like, and it's very imprecise because you simply can't tell what you're going to get. And like in many uh, forms of this kind of photography, you can't really tell until you get it back onto a big screen either. No matter how good the back of the camera might look, it's very hard to tell. So the process of in intentional camera movement is, is a simple one. You intentionally move the camera whilst the shutter is open and it creates light streaks. It creates, well, blurs. It creates art and well, some of it is awesome. What does the sign happen to say here? This is Napton Cutting. It's a butterfly nature reserve. I haven't been out nearly enough lately. Haven't been out exploring this particular part of Norfolk. Uh, I should have been, but mental health troubles up here and, well, in your life, in my life, are preventing me from enjoying most of it, to be honest with you at the moment. But I forced myself out. It's been a lovely day. And this video is a bit different from normal. Uh, in that you're gonna hear me ramble a bit, so I'm sorry if that doesn't suit. In the description I've put timestamps for where the photos are. Maybe you'll, you'll indulge me a little while I'm here. Now, I see other photos and such while I'm here. There's, I'm not, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna shoot this. These two trees up here, actually I do like these. But, I, <coughs> um, but I'm gonna resist the urge. I, I'm never, <laughs> God, this cough. <coughs> I've never seen these before. Uh, never walked this part of it before. A little bit further down I have. Uh, but those two trees there are, are rather nice. But, uh, I'm here for one thing, um, and I'm not gonna, and I'm not gonna deviate from that. Now I have been doing quite a lot of ICM over the last couple of months. I call it my Echoes project, and if you have a look at this shot. I think you can see that Echoes is particularly appropriate for the kind of style I'm kind of going for and getting out of it. So the shot you've just seen was shot in another woodland a couple of miles that way. And I think it's a particularly nice shot just of the avenue. This particular woodland has got a number of uh, kind of wide avenues lined with beach and such. It's very, it's very nice. I would argue that it's not hugely photogenic unless you've got the right lighting conditions uh, for it, because it, visually it's, it's nice, but as we all know, a lot of things that you see that are very nice in your, uh, uh, in your vision don't turn into good photographs. But as an ICM, an intentional camera movement shot, I think it's, I think it's very good. And uh, yeah, just produces a nice piece of art. And it's different. Afternoon.
I'll make this look hard, mate. God on my life. I forgot the bag tends to slip off the, the shoulder of this coat. Camera settings are really important because you've got to keep the shutter open for longer, therefore you need a, sl uh, a shorter shutter speed so you can capture that movement. And with too much light, of course, that could be tricky. So I'm at the lowest native setting of the camera, which is 200. In order to get this shutter right down, I'm going to pop it up to f18, and that gives me a third of a second approximately. And I don't know whether this is going to work or not, but I've got in front of me, I do know it's not going to work because the battery's just died. <coughs> So camera settings are important because we've got to keep the shutter open for longer. We need a, a, a lower shutter speed. I could force the camera into an ISO 64, which is an extended ISO lit, uh, <coughs> setting on it. But I'm not going to do that for me. I'm just going to try leaving it at 200, which is a natural point. Uh, I've got to avoid the sky, and that's easier said than done uh, because there's literally no leaf cover at the moment still. So I've got to kind of zoom in to get this. I can't go too high. Um, and when I say I've got to avoid the sky, the reason being is, is that it's going to overexpose, it's going to burn out, uh, and it's going to take the eye on the image. So we don't even really want any of it. In order to really drag my shutter, pushing this up to 220 and it gives me uh, half a second uh, on this and I don't need much and I'm not bothered about diffraction uh, in any way shape or form because not that the lens is going to give me a great deal but um, <laughs> it's going to be blurred anyway so it doesn't matter uh, at all here um, in actual fact stick it up to f22 just for good measure it's a hot, uh, the uh, lowest uh, or the smallest aperture the lens will give me and uh, I'm just going to position a, a point up here and I'm going to oh, no 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 that doesn't work <coughs> timing of the shutter is crucial here and one of the things I find works very well is if I put the uh, shutter on a custom uh, delay of two seconds and I can move the camera through that I, I find it difficult to press the shutter and move the camera at the same time, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, that is to say that it's, it's just another one of those things to think about if I'm having to press the shutter and move. It's easier if I'm moving while the shutter opens and closes. And crucially, if you stop while the shutter is open, if you stop that movement while the shutter is open, of course, you're going to capture more light from the area that you've stopped in, and thus your streaks are going to look uh, kind of, well, well, let's say, just a bit like this. Two second timer, and no, I can't even manufacture it. Let's give it another go. I'm proving myself wrong here. There we go. A bit like that. That's where I actually started moving after the shutter had opened. And the effect just isn't there. Whereas if I am doing this, so two seconds, one second, and move. It's not a great image from what I can see, but I'll tell you something. It's not bad. And I don't have to move the camera very much at all. As you see, I, I, I don't have to have a second's worth of shutter. It just has to be enough to capture movement. And of course, crucially, a lot of cameras these days have got motion sensors in them and sensor shift technology to um, detect that movement and, uh, uh, and move the sensor to kind of counteract it. Turn it off, turn your uh, vibration sensor off. What's it called? Oh, well, you do, you, you, um, um, that's stabilization. Yes, turn the stabilization off because otherwise the camera is going to be fighting against you to try and get everything uh, kind of uh, right. And um, if you don't move the camera far, which I'm not, as you're seeing, then you, know, you might end up with a stable image. And I'll tell you something as well. Uh, this camera is more than capable of stabilizing a reasonable amount of movement. Anyway, have a look at these.
worth pointing out as well that because this is more of a, a kind of subjective art form rather than just pure photography, it's difficult to get it wrong. What you're looking at here is a couple of images that have got more post-processing in them than anything else. And you're turning out different images with just different effects in Lightroom. And it's not really even effects, it's just moving the sliders a little. It's not a bad image, it's got kind of ethereal feel to it. And that's often what you'll get out of a woodland uh, shoot with ICM as well. It's a very ethereal uh, feel to it. The light's very flat now. It was a much, much brighter earlier. And I'm not sure I'd have got much more out of it, but you know, it's, it is what it is. Let's see what else I can find down here. Now I've done a reasonable amount of ICM on the beach as well. And I've got to tell you, I've been very, very pleased with it. In actual fact, one image that I've had from the beach, I'm almost certainly going to print it and put it on a wall. But that's for another video. Oh, dog. Hello, dog. Hello, dog. Now, of course, you can do ICM with faster shutter speeds. And here we're working on a 20th of a second. But of course, I've got to match the speed of the shutter, and I'm not watching, with the speed of movement. And it does make it a lot more challenging. Hold on. Let's get just these. And I did say I didn't want the sky earlier. That didn't work. Let's start here at the bottom where I'll get a slower speed. Oh, I'm not watching, I'm talking, I'm not watching, come on. They're not working quite so well. And I've got to say, it's a lot harder to achieve it this way. That's a better image. It's not a great image. And as I said earlier, I didn't really want the sky, but have a look at it, see what you think. It probably doesn't matter quite so much. Let me know what you think of it. Essentially what you're looking for in a lot of uh, these ICM scenes is a bit of structure. It's something that will nicely convey the movement that you are incorporating into the shot. So trees work very well. People, of course, work very well. Recognisable shapes that ultimately you're not trying to obliterate or change so much that they're no longer recognisable. Having ICM that is perhaps so abstract that you can't identify what the item was is, I think, another genre of photography. It, it's taken it to a different level of abstract. And not to say it's wrong, it's just not what I'm trying to uh, achieve. I've become slightly consumed with the reeds. There's, there's some here which are really nice as well. And I can really, I can put this straight. Can I? Oh, there's something. I'm going to have to come back here to do it. But I can get the sun, the, the halo of the sun, right in the back there. It's a, <laughs> it's a lovely photo. Well, I think it's a lovely photo. Uh, Tell me what you think of that one as well. I'm going to get back to some ICM soon. I'm sh promise, promise. In actual fact, I was kind of working on the ICM here, but 
I, I think uh, a static shot was rather nice as well. Wow. Wow. That was nice. I'm just punching in to the reeds. I'm at a fifth of a second, F18. And, oh heck, the structure, the structure of the reeds is lovely. And with a bit of movement on it, Wow, just look at these, these, these are nice. These are very, very nice. Let me know what you think of it and click the like button. Heart filled with worries, no more. In a world full of sorrow, what for? You watch the world from the place We spotted, and it was very late in the day, a bit like it is now, although we get far closer to dark uh, than it is now. Uh, I spotted these uh, cypress trees, or something like that anyway, uh, against the backdrop of uh, a woodland of silver birch. And they were very striking. They're not quite so striking now. They, they've lost a lot of their, their colour, it seems. It might just be the, the situation, it might just be the lighting. And I tried back then to get a, a shot of them, which I, if I can find it, I'll, I'll put it up. Uh, but it involved getting the tripod incredibly high to kind of get over the bank that's here. Um, and now I've got a bit more access. I, I, I might actually get up onto the bank. Uh, and, uh, I should be able to just walk around up there. I'm not doing a good job of this. I'm going to go up to the bank and find find a better position. So I'm up the bank now. I'm trying to hone in on this bush actually. I don't think that works. A good example of what happens when you stop while the shutter's still open. I kind of like that, but the bush, the yellow bush, and gorse, I think it is. Not, again, don't have my glasses on, but it's yellow and green bush. Uh, but I think it would be better actually not in the shot because of the, uh, the, the, the wonderful <coughs> structure of the silver birch behind it. What have we got over here that just silver birch and let's move through that just because we've got so much kind of colour in the silver birch or, or rather it's not colour it's contrast isn't it uh, dark woodland behind it silver birch is at the forefront of it uh, let's just get this one oh there's an up and down moving I didn't like that let's try another one That's quite nice. Yeah, I quite like that one. Let's try and get these cypress. Again, with the movement, yeah, all we're really getting is streaks of colour. It's echoes of what we see with our eyes as a static image. Oh, I don't know about that. Let's try again. I think that's better, but I'm not sure. Let's just try a, a left to right or right to left here. I think I moved too far. <laughs> Awful streaks. It's created an, an interesting pattern, but I, I wouldn't call it art. Let's try another one. 
way too much movement. This is probably the best, in fact, my, well, who's to call it the best? My favourite shot from shooting the silver birch. It's so ethereal. I love the just relatively gentle movement in it. And obviously I've edited it a little with the colours and highlights and everything. And it's a crop. I have to obviously say it's a crop. It's a crop from one of those that has the gorse bush in it as well. But I think it works very well. It's a, a real kind of pastely, but there's, there's an art feel to it. It reminds me a little bit of a, a kind of Van Gogh or something. Obviously I'm not trying to make that comparison, but yeah, it's just got that feel to it. I really, really like this. I'd be very interested in what you have to say about it. Let me know in the comments. You're seeing most of these that I'm shooting as well, so you get an idea of the kind of thing that I'm doing with the camera and the kind of results I'm getting. Uh, don't forget, I have deliberately come out towards the tail end of the day when the light is beginning to fade because I do need to lengthen that shutter. Of course, I can do it with filters, but it's just adding another layer of complexity to it for my liking at this time. Uh, I tend to use filters more in the mornings where I am kind of racing against the sun coming up and there's still plenty of wonderful uh, shots to be had, but in order to capture them, I've got to stop the light coming into the lens the longer I'm there. Here, the longer I'm here, because the light's fading, I you know, don't have to make that choice. I can just uh, adjust uh, camera settings uh, and work with that. But the key things, and the key things you need to take away from this is, generally speaking, do not stop for the duration that the shutter is open because you will get a more static image. And I, when all said and done, it's probably not what you want. And it will probably create something that is probably far messier than you can imagine. I would be using something like a shutter speed of half a second, maybe a second. You don't really want to go a whole lot longer because you've got to maintain that movement. And when all said and done, you probably do want a smooth movement from one side to another or up and down. In some cases, you might twist. But if you're doing that pan up or down, it's got to be quite stable, otherwise the light streaks that you're going to be creating are going to be wonky as hell. Um, and if you're after a wavy line, great, but probably, certainly in my experience so far, is not going to produce the kind of image that we might want to put on a wall. Anyway, look, I really do hope that this has been useful. If you're enjoying this kind of content, click the subscribe button. And uh, if you have a look up here, there's another video out in the woods that you might be interested in.